Greetings and blessings once again, YouTube. This is John the Jansenist, also known as Hell's Unicorn. And uh, this evening I'm going to be doing just a quick little follow-up on the video that I put up uh, last night where I talked about Hitler and uh, my various views regarding his uh, alleged status as a Catholic and consequently also as a Christian. And I'm going to take this opportunity to basically extend some of my initial remarks and also to respond to a couple of websites that I had looked up previously that uh, basically attempt to refute a lot of the initial sources that I had used for my previous video. And one of these uh, is a site called www.nobeliefs.com backslash Hitler hyphen myths. And this uh, refutation, which was put up sometime between May of 2005 and September of 2010, lays out some very specific points that I just wanted to take a look at here. And I've provided a link in the description for this site also, so you can look at it also. Now, the first myth uh, put forth uh, by this website that they claim is basically false is that Hitler was not a Christian. They are arguing that, in fact, Hitler was a Christian. Now, before I get into... Uh, going through these various points, I just wanted to state uh, part of the problem that often comes up when discussing whether or not someone is a Christian is that we don't really have a consistent definition of what is a Christian. I mean, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of different denominations, many of them teaching different things. And so we don't have any sort of regule fide which is the Latin for rule of faith, to determine true Christianity from false Christianity. Atheists, I don't think, are really interested in making distinctions about this stuff anyway, but for us who uh, think of ourselves as believers, I think it's necessary to start making some distinctions. And um, a lot of my Roman Catholic friends and subscribers are probably not going to like to hear me say this, but the true acid test of Christianity, as I see it, is Bible belief and believing that the Bible is, in fact, undisputedly the only infallible source of our religion, of our faith, of everything that we believe as it pertains to the salvation of our souls and the resurrection of our bodies. And uh, there's naturally differing views regarding uh, how we should view the Bible um, and all of that, but uh, suffice to say the Martin Luther concept of sola scriptura is not without merit, although I would argue that uh, any Bible-believing church should also have a rule of faith that determines proper interpretation of this book, and thus when we say Bible alone, we do not mean simply Bible in hand determining by our own private will. What we mean is that the Bible is the only infallible source of truth. There are other sources of truth out there for us to look towards, but the Bible is the only way that we can have any assurance of certainty on those truths as well. The Bible is what allows us to make distinctions between true revelation and false revelation, true intuition and false uh, intuition, and so forth. So I would argue that any church that would either state that we can have some sort of a mystical or subjective private interpretation of scripture or a church that is non-scripture based or a church that takes a collaborative view of magisterium and scripture, which is what the Roman church has accepted since the Council of Trent, is in error and thus I would not count them as true Christians. I do, however, believe that there are true Christians, faithful elect, within all of these religious groups, but that at some point in their lives they will either they will come to some sort of an understanding that either all or part of what their church is teaching them is in fact erroneous. So with all of that out of the way, I'm just going to uh, go into the first myth. Hitler was not a Christian. Well, I would contest this. Now, I'm not going to say that Hitler was an atheist because the way that atheism defines itself today, very vaguely, I might add, is a lack of belief in a higher power. Now, I would contend that there's really actually no such thing as atheism the way that atheists would assert that it exists, but rather that atheism is a convenient term uh, for them to avoid accountability for their own viewpoints. They can just say, oh, I don't believe in this and I'm not under ob any obligation to uh, actually explain what I believe since I de facto believe in nothing. I'm just going uh, with the default position. And uh, the, the response to that uh, that we should probably have is, well, you know, then there's no discussion 
see you later, and that's the end of it. There's nothing really to appeal to there. We have a person that uh, basically has confessed no interest in discussing the matter further and is probably only interested in trolling you whenever you try to make an assertion, and so don't have the conversation. Battle won. But anyway, I'm bloviating a little bit here. On to uh, the first myth and all the points within. Hitler was born and baptized into Catholicism. Well, outwardly that's true, but me being a person that believes in sovereign, irresistible, unfailing grace, this doesn't cut it for me. A person can be baptized and that doesn't qualify them as a Christian. We have people who are baptized and then turn into atheists, go out and actually attempt to unbaptize themselves. And uh, furthermore, uh, according to uh, most Augustinian-based uh, Catholics or Protestants, um, there has to be an inward spiritual intervention by the Holy Spirit in order for any sacrament to be valid. And this holds true especially for baptism, since it is the first sacrament that brings a person into the body of Christ. Now, the second point, his Jewish anti-Semitism came from his Christian background. This may be partially true if we consider his Roman Catholic background, because there is a history of anti-Semitism, particularly within German Catholicism, and it had to do specifically with the practice of money lending back in the Middle Ages. And this really, they culturally, they never really got over this. So there is some validity to this. However, to say that his Jewish anti-Semitism came from his Christian background alone is false, because there were plenty of non-Christian German philosophers in the 19th century leading up to the 20th century who also held these views and not only probably influenced Hitler but actually associated with him after he rose to power. Now third, his early personal notes show his interest in religion and biblical views. You know something? Atheists have interests in religion and biblical views, otherwise they wouldn't be talking about it all the time. This means absolutely nothing. Uh, point four, he believed that the Bible represented the history of mankind. That's fine, you know. There are a lot of people that think that there is a lot of history in the Bible, but they don't believe any of the miracles. I'll use Thomas Jefferson as an example of this. He wouldn't call himself a Christian. I wouldn't call him one either, but he thought that uh, the Bible represented part of mankind's history, and most other deists did too. His Nazi platform, their version of the Constitution, includes a section on positive Christianity, and he never removed it. This could mean a number of things. It could mean that it was put on the platform specifically to pander to voters. Point six, he confessed his Christianity. Again, public confessions of believing in something don't really mean anything, uh, particularly if we have accounts of them saying different things in private. Politicians, in particular, should be suspect when they make public confessions because likely it's to pander to an audience. Point seven, he tried to establish a united Reich German church. Um, I don't see the word Christian anywhere in that title, Reich German Church. There are churches that are not Christian. Uh, they're called Unitarian Universalist churches, actually. That's the most popular kind. But stating you know, a title like this, to me, actually suggests the opposite of being a Christian. It means that he was probably a theist in some respect. I'm not asserting that uh, Hitler was himself an atheist. You can't run a country based on atheism because it's basically a belief in nothing. All right, point eight. Hitler allowed the destruction of Jewish synagogues and temples, but not Christian churches. Well, the Jews were a minority, so they were easy to attack. Christians, however, represented 90% of the German population. So while he's trying to ascend to power, obviously he's not going to want to do this. And once he has gained power, there is no guarantee that he won't have a full-out revolution to contend with amongst his own people if he tries to implement something like this before he can convince people that these churches are no longer needed. I mean, this doesn't say anything at all, really. He encouraged Nazis to worship in Christian churches. Absolutely. That's good photo ops for the ruse that he was a practicing Christian if we assume that he was indeed faking it. There's, there's no real objective proof of anything here. He spoke of his Christian beliefs in his speeches and proclamations. Well, duh. Any politician running for office in a majority Christian nation is going to do this. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. His contemporaries, friends, Protestant ministers, and Catholic priests, including the Vatican, thought of Hitler as a Christian. Well, that's fine and dandy. You know something? I think that many Protestant ministers and Catholic priests are not Christians. 
so what? That's a group of people who have an opinion on something. Uh, the Catholic Church never ex excommunicated Hitler. He died a Catholic. This one is probably the most, the strongest argument that he makes, and I actually don't contend this because this is actually a fact. What this speaks to, I think, more is whether or not the Roman Catholic Church as it exists today is actually a Christian church in a institutional sense. I do believe that there are actual Christians in the church. There may be a good number of them, too. But whether or not the uh, institution itself is Christian is another matter. And throughout history, we have examples of the uh, Roman pontiff actually um, uh, conferring the status of Christians onto pagan rulers that they collaborated with. So again, even though this is a pretty strong point, it doesn't necessarily speak to Hitler being a Christian in the pure, faithful, Bible-believing sense that we would think he was. So um, I have attached a couple of links that actually deal specifically with some of these points. Uh, one of them is actually a link uh, to a a site that deals with uh, Hitler replacing the Bible with copies of Mein Kampf in Lutheran and Catholic churches in Germany. Now, the atheist may argue that this does not necessarily disqualify him as being a Christian, but without the Bible, what is our actual source of infallible, you know, basically un- whitewashed or uh, undiluted uh, Christianity. I mean, you know, as a Catholic, I could make an appeal to tradition, but every valid tradition that we have is based upon God's direct revelation, the Word, Jesus Christ, the Gospels, and that was all written down in perfect form with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the Scriptures. So if we have somebody actually replacing Bibles with his own literature, essentially rewriting the Bible in a sense, I'm sorry, we're not dealing with a Christian. We're not necessarily dealing with an atheist, but we are not dealing with a Christian. Furthermore, uh, I also linked to a article from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, this was back in uh, January of 2002, and uh, they discovered uh, the fragile typewritten documents of the 1940s that lay out the Nazi plan in grim detail, take over the churches from within, using party sympathizers, discredit, jail, or kill Christian leaders. This actually happened. Some of it happened with the blessing of the Roman pontiff because they had enemies in Germany, uh, particularly in the old Catholic churches that they didn't want to have to deal with, and re-indoctrinate the congregants, giving them a new faith in Germany's Third Reich. And I will, again, refer back to one of the points made by this uh, website claiming that Hitler was, in fact, a Christian. And it's right here. He wanted to establish a united Reich German church. So again, I'm just, you know, I'm mystified that somebody can make these arguments with a straight face, but apparently a lot of people do. And it speaks to the uh, scriptures that talk about the darkened minds and the darkened eyes of unbelievers, and that's a whole other speech in and of itself. So I'm just going to conclude by saying that this is one of a couple of videos that I'm going to do on this website, just because I think it's profitable for those of us who are believers to be able to ponder basically what these people are arguing uh, when they make these audacious claims, uh, unsubstantiated I might add, and I'm going to go a bit further into this site and also another site that's linked to it, um, so there will be another part to this, I will try to get it up at some point tonight, if not then by tomorrow, so until then, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, God be with you.